Remember when you were a kid? I know some of us, the lucky ones, still are. <laughs> and when you played your favorite game. You know, it doesn't matter what it was. Soccer, football, basketball, or simply you played with dirt. You got that moment. Good? Got it? Put it in your mind? Got it? Good. Remember that nothing mattered at that time. You didn't think of the end of the game. You didn't think of the past or future. You were simply in the moment. In the flow, as Dr. Mihail Czech Mihail defines it. So what is flow? Flow is a state of being fully engaged. And as my friend Dr. Tarban Shahar defines it, it is a meditation in action. I really love this definition. I love this definition because it really explains flow in a simple language. Meditation in action. It is similar to meditation, as in meditation you focus on your breath, body, etc. And in a flow, you focus on music, game, writing, something else. While being in the floor, your existence is temporarily suspended. You, you don't exist when in the flow. It is just that moment that exists. So let's go over some of benefits of flow. Peak experience and peak performance. So you have peak experience and peak performance. You have high motivation, creativity, self-esteem, serenity, and healing. You know, interestingly enough, we have similar benefits from meditation. So let's look at this diagram and first see when we are definitely not in the flow. So, when skill is low and task difficulty very high, we certainly cannot perform the task at hand. When skill is high and task difficulty very low, we are bored. We don't perform well. I have seen it with my team members over and over again. When they bored, you will think that's what they really want, but in reality, they really don't. They, they do not perform well. However, when skill is high and task difficulty is high, we are in the flow. So flow is experienced when activity is not too difficult and not too easy, and we have necessary skill to perform the task. So, if you are an artist, musician, writer, you still know, you certainly know what I'm talking about. You are creating something and nothing else matter while you are creating that. While you are creating that something, you are truly in a flow. You are not thinking of end result. I'm teaching this lesson, I'm not thinking of end result. I'm in the flow. You know, the research shows that that's exactly what we need more of it to become even happier. So what we need is we need more flow to become even happier, to be more engaged, to have uh, high skills and have uh, a big challenge so that we can perform, stretch ourselves uh, so that when we do, we are truly in a flow. There was also research done by Baxton in 1954, I believe. And... Uh, 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 they brought in the students, and they were paid really well, you know, back then, uh, basically to do nothing, <laughs> to do nothing for 24 hours. So the students were, um, you know, uh, they were okay, uh, I believe, for like first seven to eight hours, and then they just became increasingly unhappy. They wanted to participate in other experiments where uh, pay was much less and they would do some work, but they still wanted to do that. Again, they, wanted, you know, they were getting paid a lot of money, a lot, you know. Uh, uh, they were getting paid to do nothing for 24 hours. And yet, after 7 to 8 hours, they wanted to perform another task. They would pay, be getting paid uh, less, much less, and do some work 
uh, that's what they would prefer. So, you know, we human, we really meant to do some work. We are uh, created to create something. We are meant to be in a flow. So, now that we know that this can help us and being in a flow is uh, what is truly good for us, how can we be in a flow? Um, you know, just immersed in what you do. And that could be a cooking, gardening, playing with your kids and grandkids, reading, uh, uh, anything that you engage in activity. I know some of you might say, well, uh, I watch, you know, movies, I watch TV and I'm in a flow. Uh, you are in kind of a flow when you do that. However, the research shows that uh, the brain activity, the certain neurons that fire are not the same as when you are fully engaged, when your mind and body are engaged in the activity. You know, I remember years ago, <laughs> there was a radio commercial. You know, I lived in New York. I lived in New York back then. And it goes something like this. I forgot exactly, but it, it just uh, it fits so well, this lecture. It goes something like this. If you don't brush your teeth, read paper, drink coffee, and talk to your kids at the same time, you are not New Yorker. I forgot what uh, Ed was all about, but uh, <laughs> we were just uh, uh, told and taught, many of us, uh, at least in, in the western part of the world, that we need to multitask, that we need to do many things at the same time, and then and only then we will be productive. And I used to multitask like crazy, and I was proud of it. You know, now I know I was wrong. I was not contributing neither to my productivity nor to my happiness. And that was just not good for me, but I didn't know it. The research clearly shows today that we are more productive when we focus on one thing and one thing only. We also know that um, we can be in the flow when we do that, and therefore we'll be also happier people if we do that. So keep that in mind in the future. And again, I know sometimes at work we're almost like forced to multitask and I'm not telling anyone <laughs> what to do at work, but uh, keep that in mind so that uh, uh, when you focus on one thing you will be more productive and also you'll contribute to your own happiness. Uh, I, I was presenting, as I said earlier, at, at the World Congress on Positive Psychology and had a great opportunity and honor to talk to Dr. Mihail Chet Mihail. He, together with Dr. Marty Seligman, is actually responsible for establishing the field of positive psychology. You know, we didn't talk about that earlier, but just wanted you to know that, uh, uh, because I think it's important that you know what Mihail Chet Mihail has done for this field. And again, if we create another much more detailed course, we'll be talking more about it. Now, I will post some articles about flow, but you do need to know that the, uh, again, entire field of positive psychology started thanks to Dr. Czech Mihail. And interestingly enough, they actually met on the beach when Marty Seligman, I believe, was uh, uh, struggling to get out of the ocean and Dr. Czech Mihail helped him and, you know, the rest is 